Kenny Jones, the comeback kid expert at guiding people back to their resilient roots without shame so they stand firm in their powerful harvest. Author of the Amazon International best-selling book, Comeback Season, The Untapped Art of Mastering Your Resilience, Kenny empowers people to embrace their personal stories as the core of their success, no matter how difficult or unpopular. He speaks candidly about how to turn pain into purpose while healing from revealing. Now, an entrepreneur, international book coach, and life enthusiast, his business approach is realistic and personal. Through his work, he has positioned numerous aspiring authors, entrepreneurs, and dreamers to own and embrace their stories. Kenny, I see you smiling over there. Do you like that intro? <laughs> Thank you so much. I, that was awesome. I feel honored. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it was a lot of fun, man. You are amazing, man. Thank you, seriously, for taking the time to come on today and to share with our audience about what you're working on and all of your passions, man. Thank you so much. Oh, man, I'm so honored to be here with you, Chris, and the work that you're doing. I'm so honored to be uh, able to speak to your audience, and hopefully we'll be able to connect beyond this. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I know it, man. I know it already. And we're going to dive right into the theme of the day, which is the power of silence. So, Kenny, how has the power of silence impacted you and your life and your philosophy? It's an incredible thought process there when you're thinking about silence. I know we were talking earlier about yep. being able to just be quiet sometimes. One of the core quotes that is in the middle of my business uh, is from Zora Neale Hurston. And it's interesting because she says, if you are silent about your pain, then they will kill you and say you enjoyed it. Mm. Wow. That quote literally has revitalized and changed my life. Mm. There's a lot of times when we are silent about our pain. We're not as silent about our triumphs and things that we're doing great. But yeah. when the thing sort of hit the fan and we're not doing so great, we get really silent about that. Yeah. So for me, that has been a catalyst into my business. I've been someone who's always been silent about my struggles. I never wanted to tell people what I struggled with when mm. I, you know, lost my job or I was homeless or, you know, my car was stolen and all of those things I didn't mm. say anything wow. about. Um, but I, I believe wholeheartedly that the power of when you're silent about things that you should be able to embrace, then you sort of put yourself into this pigeonhole of of despair and you don't have to be that way. I believe that it's okay to speak about things that you struggle with. Mm. So that's how it has changed my life. Dude, that's powerful, man. And and really what I hear is the, this power of, of, of not being ashamed, right? We're going to be talking about it today, but the, the shame that keeps people from being expressed, being self-expressed, getting their, their pain and frustration out, feeling like they can go to their fellow brothers or sisters or parents or whoever, relatives, peers, and share that stuff. There's this closed-inness, this separateness that people mm -hmm. think that they are excluded or or you know they're they're it's an exclusionary versus inclusionary. Hey, this is this person's just like me. They're having the same or similar struggles and you know the same feelings, same emotions. I right. can share with them. Instead of that, it's a distance. I got to keep this bottled up. I got to figure it out on my own. You know, like ego. Don't get hurt. Don't be vulnerable. That kind of thing. I love what you said about ego. I mean, one of the things that I put in my book, and we'll talk about that later too, is mm -hmm. that we all live on one Earth. But there's 7.1 billion worlds, right? Mm, and so what's wow. in your world is different. What's in my world and what's different in that person's world. And so then we kind of make ourselves believe that everybody should be uh, or everybody's going to have a negative connotation about our own world. Mm. Whereas actually everybody has their own stuff, right? right? So ego is really the driving force behind why we stay silent about things. So wow. that's a really good point. Wow, dude, I'm excited to dive into this interview. We're going to have a lot of fun. Um, let's dive into you, man. Who who are you? What are you up to today? I, I mentioned a little bit in the intro, but just tell us firsthand what you're creating and, and what you're all about. Uh, I, um, I, I am a lot. <laughs> Love it. Love it. I yeah. am 
um, a, like I said, like a, a life enthusiast. Mm. I'm a mistake maker. Mm. Uh, I'm an author. I'm an entrepreneur. Um, and what I do is I like to stand next to people who have had shame over any type of situation that they've been through. Um, so I have uh, written a book. Uh, comeback season, the untapped art of mastering your resilience. It Love became it. an international bestseller. Um, I, as you said, I'm a book coach, uh, an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. um, and I also love watching Game of Thrones. So, like, <laughs> there's a lot of awesome things about my business. But personally, I am somebody that is is really enthusiastic mm -hmm. about life. Mm -hmm. um, and I was thinking about this this topic earlier when I said, "Well, what am I going to say when Chris says?" Who are you? Mm. I mean, it's so many things that come with me, but if I had to put it in one word is I'm a mistake maker, mm. but I'm also a comeback seasoner. So yeah. Wow. Dude, I <laughs> love it. I love it. So let's let's go back some and tell us about some of these comebacks that you've had to endure and, and live through and become a champion to say I've come back. Very good question. Um so my entire life, I have been someone who wanted validation from other people. That is something that I knew and owned very recently. And so what that meant was uh, w when things sort of went wrong or mistakes that I've made, I certainly felt shame about those things. So one thing that I've come back from um, is being homeless for two years. I lost my job. Uh, due to budget cuts and a friend of mine, quote unquote, uh, said that she'd keep my stuff. I didn't, um, and the, the job that I had gave me an apartment. So that meant I had to leave the apartment, um, had nowhere to live or anything like that. And my friend told me that she was going to keep my stuff until I found out that she pawned all of it. Everything that I ever owned from my TV computers and threw my clothes out on the street. Um, and then she became very distant and I couldn't find her because I wanted to know what was going on. Come to find out she, she had gotten pregnant and needed money and pawned all of my stuff. Wow. So here I am with no job, nowhere to live. And that night that I found out she pawned my stuff, my car was also stolen and totaled from a, a drunk college student. And I did not have enough money to have full coverage on my car. So all I had was liability. So as you know, if, your car is totaled, then you're responsible for that financial responsibility. And I didn't have it. So I had nothing, nothing to my name. Um, and, and I didn't know what to do. But I did have a positive attitude. Hmm. And I said to myself that now you have two options at this crossroad. You can get back into yourself or you can step out and start thinking about new pathways to get you to where you need to be. Mm -hmm. So uh, for two entire years, I worked on myself. I worked on the things that I felt I brought to the table and was able to land another position that was a lot better and then start to rebuild my life. Nice. Um, but it was all about attitude. Um, and that's one situation. I have dealt with homophobia as being an openly gay man. Um, and what that meant for me growing up in the South, mm -hmm. I didn't meet my father until I was 22 years old. And that entire experience was life changing. And I didn't know um, what it was, what I was dealing with until I met my father, which was depression. And so I, I dealt with depression for a number of years um, and also was able to find my way and my voice from that. So mm -hmm. it's been a lot of different things that you'll learn a lot about in my book if you if you were to get it. But those were a couple of examples. Wow. That's incredible. So really, I, I hear losing your, your home, the, the, the solid foundation from underneath you, your mm -hmm. possessions. A lot, of, a lot of people define themselves by where they live, the type of people they hang out with, the yeah. job they have, the possessions, and say that this is me. I'm, I'm this identity. So I can only imagine you know, how much of an identity like wake up it was having all this stuff changed or eliminated, released, torn from your life, whatever you want to call it. Um, um, you know, how did you learn about like impermanence and, and change through that process? It was it was glaring to me mm. that there was nothing worth your sanity. Mm. There was not a possession. There is wow. not anything that you cu currently have that is worth your inner sanity. Yeah. You're right. I held on to those things because those things meant status for me. Those things meant I was successful in the eyes of people that I wanted validation from. Yeah. This, these things meant that I was successful to the people I was giving my own power to. 
right? So I gave you power to tell me that I was great based off of what I had Mm -hmm. until it was all gone. And so in that moment, I was like, oh my gosh, now I'm nothing. Mm -hmm. Until I realized that there's other things that's going to come to you that's better. And maybe this is making room for those things, but it's all about how I was thinking up here. So that's how I learned about it. (laughs) <laughs> That's incredible, man. So you're you're helping people deal with shame, and you have you, you're doing book, uh, you know, helping people write their books and stuff. Tell us a little bit more about that and kind of what that entails, what that looks like. Yeah. So interesting story. When I wrote my book, I wrote my book in three weeks, mm-hmm. and sometimes people when I when I tell them that they get like, oh, what three weeks? Oh my mm-hmm. gosh! Like, sure, I was one of those people who thought when you wrote a book, you had to go in the middle of nowhere for a year and find yourself and. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that was what I thought. Right. Um, and and when I I had came home one day and I was watching Game of Thrones, ironically, mm-hmm. and I said, I'm actually wasting time giving somebody else money, mm-hmm. right? By watching their creativity when I can create something from my own story. <laughs> Sport, dude. I love sports. Like I love them, and dude, it is the epitome of sitting on the sidelines of life and not appreciating the hero that we are, each of us, in our own freaking journey. And absolutely. And so I said, you know, and and one of my one of my catchphrases is turn off the TV. Mm. Right. Literally turned off the TV, and I started writing. Now I didn't know the process, and I I was like, I don't know publishing company. I don't know any of that, but I know I have a story, and I put I want to put it in the book. Um, Yeah. started to do some self um some research about self-publishing and what that was like and i found some really good resources and i i did it on my own and the book was published and it was great but then i realized that so many people were shocked and said oh my gosh i have always wanted to write a book and i said well i know if i can do it based off of and i work full-time you know and i love what i do full-time but i know if i can write a book in three weeks working full-time then i can help other people do that Mm-hmm. And not only can I help people just write a book in their, you know, tangible hand, I can help them embrace their story. So now we have about 35 authors that have gone through wow. our cohort based course Dude. that has embrace their stories all from being a mermaid in hawaii like there's an actual mermaid community and this woman wrote a book about that to um infertility issues and women struggling with pcos and so there was these transformative moments that i started to see as i was helping my comeback kids write their books Mm. um so i wanted to continue to do that for people and to show them the same way that i show myself Mm. And you're, you're also speaking too. Tell us about the power of, you know, I, I want to dive a little bit more into the power of a message because you're, you're mm-hmm. helping people with, with their stories, their journeys, owning that. Like, let's dive into that. Tell us more what your philosophy is about owning your message. There is a million books out here, probably two million. But if you haven't written a book, there's not one book out there about your story. Mm. It is important for you to understand that, sure, there are similar stories as yours. Mm -hmm. There are similar messages, but not one that you are going to tell until you tell it. Right. And so for me, that's the power of message. That's the power Mm -hmm. of what you have. Yes, there are books out there about resilience. Absolutely, there are people who are going through worse things than me. However, my story is mine and I own it. And I'm able to use that as a vehicle to help other people own their stories. Mm-hmm. I've heard some incredible life-changing stories that I'm like, oh my gosh. But to, to, to be able to say to someone, I don't want to read your content until you're done. I'm not a, a, a editor. I'm not, I'm not here to police your story. I'm not mm. going to say you need to take this out and take nobody's going to read this. That's not my job. Mm. For me, it's really helping people own their message. And I do think there's power in owning what it is that you have to say because you haven't said it yet. So. Yeah, and- and what, what I also hear is um, teaching people to not c- compare themselves, right, to others because, oh, that person's story is so much more powerful than mine. It's like, screw it. Like, you have your story, and when people come across your path, they are attracted into your life for whatever reason. And if you have a story to tell that you've worked on, that you've developed, then you can mm-hmm. actually do something to impact their life, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe they've heard Tony Robbins' story and it didn't freaking resonate, but they hear your story and it actually hits the core of their freaking soul. If I'm